right, today we're boring out uh, ambassador heads into make, basically make them into El Dorado heads. That's basically the only difference between the two heads is this bore. So when they came out with the ambassador, they had a smaller bore. I guess they thought that was going to be better for the 750cc. Uh, but they don't breathe as good. So a lot of these heads we're doing today are, they've been sitting around for 25, 30 years probably because I, I, I don't hardly ever use them. I use the Eldorado heads. They got a bigger bore, they breathe easier, especially with a big bore kit. And it's just a lot, probably gives it maybe, I don't know, three to five extra horsepower, torque, all that. So these have been dead stock for a long time and just sitting in a shelf. And uh, so that's what we're doing today. And we're in this video, we're going to kind of show you different things to do. Uh, so, we're going to uh, show you the boring process and opening them up and, yeah, the finished product. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll go to uh, exhaust threads. We'll see if we have enough time on this video, and if we do, we'll go to I'll show you guys what we do on the exhaust threads. That's a bigger process. Thanks for checking out the video. Okay, so this is about 30 millimeter bore. That's a stock ambassador bore. This has been cut out, so this is about 33. That's the same bore as uh, El Dorado. After we bore these, got to go in with a Dremel at the end, clean up this uh, bottom piece and kind of round it out so it breathes a little bit easier. Then we'll put new guides and valves and all that in it. Face them, they'll look really nice when they're done. So yeah, there's kind of before and after. Let me do it this way, that's actually better. All right, there you go, there's now before and after. Okay, we're gonna do a little milling on some heads. Uh, we might go backwards and forwards with the video, but we've already done some um, boring out of the intake bores on the ambassador heads. Now we're repairing um, Eldorado heads and ambassador heads. We're fixing the exhaust threads. So the biggest thing with these old goosey heads is that they have a threaded exhaust. And Let's get in here. We'll show one of these old bad ones. Come up here close, Lindy Lou. So these are the internal threads. Let me show you here. I got to get my glasses on because I'm an old guy. All right. So these ones have been kind of wiped out. I don't, it may not show up on the camera, but this this is your exhaust nut. Of course, it's kind of going in crooked because the threads are all screwed up, but. You know, it'll go in, but it's you can almost pull the thing out because these are cast heads, cast aluminum. Gucci put these threads in, and they rattle and they vibrate. People leave them loose, and then they break. Okay, so the this has always been an ongoing problem. So what we have to do is bore this out, and we're going to end up putting this sleeve. Now, this is a 6061 sleeve. I had another company make these for me. These are drop-ins, so we're going to mill this out, drop this sleeve in and then weld around it. Also what we're trying to do is make a press fit so the sleeve fit in there tight. And we've had to learn, let me see, is this the one that's oversized? Okay, this is the one I messed up. So in the old days this is how we do it. We just put these in, weld it. But the problem that we found out later was that sometimes if the weld wasn't strong enough, these would just rip right out of there because it's aluminum, it's not that strong. So now what we do is, here's one I think that's the proper size. We'll heat these heads up to about 450, 500 degrees. Now this won't fit in here, but when it's hot it will. It'll expand about two thousandths of an inch. So we'll heat this up, put it in the vise, heat it up, drop it in and hit it in with a piece of wood or whatever so it goes in straight. Usually they go in pretty easy. And then when it's when then when it cools off, 
it's like one. And then we'll weld it. And then at the end, what we need to do is we'll machine it off. And we're not that far yet. This one's almost on a final. We still got to take off another 10 thousandths out of this. This is a tool we made. I'll show you that as so you can get a close up of it. So this is <laughs> the hilarious thing is this is just a this is a front goozy axle that was had damaged through it. So we used that rod to 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 um, cut up. We you know cut about a four inch section of it, ground this off, and then brazed on this triangle bit uh, carbide bit. And so it cuts pretty good. It, it, it gives a pretty nice finish. But we're kind of making our own tools because that's easier and cheaper than doing anything else. Then when we're done with this, after the where weld is done, and maybe I'll I'll splice in a picture here so you can see the weld. And I'm not the greatest welder. Maybe we'll do a little bit of welding stuff, but we're gonna machine it off anyways. And when it's when it's done, it's gonna look like this. So this this is all before it gets rebuilt by the head guy. So this is one of our older ones. So the weld gets kind of shaven off. We have to leave, you know, like a millimeter or so on top so it's got some strength or else it's just going to pull right out of here. But hopefully the new way we do it, it should seize in there anyway so it's not going to pull out. But then this gets chamfered and then faced and make it look kind of pretty. But you could tell here, obviously here, you can see the what's left of the bead. And it's a lot stronger thread, so we don't have any problems with these stripping out anymore because it's probably twice as strong as the cast aluminum threads. So anyways, there's that. That's what we're doing today. Maybe we'll do a little more in-depth video on that. Maybe we'll get to the welding and all that stuff. We'll do that in a second. But I wanted to show you one of my new favorite machines as of today. So this is a Kearney Trekker K and T Curry Trekker 3 uh, 3H mill. This is from 1943. Uh, Lindsay's already got a picture of the war on the other side. It has the war finish. Um, I picked this up at auction. Uh, God, I don't know, probably 12 years ago, 15 years ago, and it sat in the shop forever. Nothing ever. We never did anything with it. Just sat there. I never even got it running nothing. So we finally, we moved out to the desert and then we moved into our new place after four years. We moved into a new place here on, on date. So we set it up and found out that the shaft that drives this head, this, uh, the, the vertical head, this shaft in here internally, this is just a cover here, but internally the shaft was bent. It was twisted. So somebody crashed the mill and twisted it. So I got in contact with uh, Ron Grundy and we traded some parts and he got me a, a new shaft. He, get, he, he, got me a, he got me a decent shaft. So uh, we put that in there and um, she, I don't ever, I don't really use it right now, but I, I kind of use the table to bring up, that up, but I, I, I don't, I'm not using the, um, the head so much because right now I think I got it tightened down right now. So it, it, anyways. Here's the shaft. Can you say shaft a couple more times? I could say shaft. Lindsay likes it when I say shaft. You got shafted? I got shafted. Okay, so here's the shaft that goes in here. Let's see, I believe this was down. This is the bent one. I tried to straighten this out. It's got like a rifle twist on it. Not, you know, shit, I tried to heat this and straighten it out and it, it, it just didn't slide that good. And it has another coupler that goes on top. I think, I can't remember now. Maybe this goes in like that. This might be the top part. I think this lays in like that. So this one was bent. It had a pretty good bend, like maybe an eighth of a turn or something bend on it. So anyways, we got that fixed. Ron got me set up with that part and we got that fixed. This thing was leaking. We got that leak fixed to just put some uh, uh, form a gasket on there and it worked pretty good. So anyways, there's that. So it, it's, it's actually running really good right now. So everything works. The, the rapid traverse works on all functions. Um, and you know what? It's a good old 
it's a good old mill, so it seems to be working pretty good. So anyways, I like this old stuff. You can fix it. it it'll last forever. And it's already whatever it is, 80-something years old, 84 years old, or 81 years old, somewhere in there. But um, no, I guess it wouldn't be. Yeah, it would be 80-something, 80, 79. I don't know. I don't have a calculator. I, I, I can't do that. But anyway, so there it is. So we'll do some shots of this thing getting cut. And, and there's a little history lesson. So old shit last forever all the new stuff i mean i don't know that you know they made this stuff to survive a nuclear bomb attack i guess but it's the good thing about it is you can repair it and fix it and it's still good as new so you're 470 you ready all right, Stevie's gonna grab a frozen insert so that temperature change will hopefully will go in easy. You ready? You got your wood? You got your hammer? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Now look at that. Slipped right in, just like downtown. That's how you do it. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so this is still hot from heating it up, so it's probably 250 degrees right now, which makes it good to do some aluminum welding. I'm not the best welder, but we're, we're going to put a bead around this. It's already kind of, it's a, it's a uh, interference fit, so it's already in there nice and tight. Uh, I'm using a Hobart 4043 rod that's for cast aluminum. And I don't know what size. This is, uh, uh, what, three, uh, three thirty seconds or something? I don't know. Anyways, here we go. Not the prettiest stuff in the world, but it'll it'll do. So show them this. So I'm getting all kinds of shit coming out of the casting. So that's why it sometimes it just blows up. But I just keep going, and I you know this is gonna get machine flat anyways. I'm not making a sterile uh, surgical device or some shit, but. Uh, Anyways, this will get cleaned up. We'll route out this a little bit, flatten off this in the mill, and make it look pretty again. There you go. Okay. All right, this is the final step in cleaning these threads up. These are all inserts are in. It's been welded, it's been faced, uh, we chamfered both sides, cleaned it up a little bit, cleaned up the weld, left some maybe two or three millimeters of weld on top of this to reinforce this so the inserts don't pop out. So with all that welding, sometimes the inserts get um, distorted. So the final step is to um, clean them out with a tap. Using some anchor lube, Good stuff. We're going to start this tap by hand. Let me get it in there. Make sure I've got it straight. Make sure I got it straight. Uh, okay, that looks good. That looks pretty good. Hopefully, we don't screw them up. Uh, that looks like it's going in. The tap's going in straight. I don't screw anything up. Alright. Good 
good in the hood. <coughs> Put your okay on it. Okay. I got a decent nut here, so we'll check it. Check it with that. Okay. Here we go. It's ready for ready for resale. Thanks for checking out the video.